After studying this module, one would be able to firstly learn about the key concepts of the cognitive paradigm, secondly understand the counselling process of the cognitive approach, thirdly examine the techniques, procedures and intervention strategies adopted by the cognitive practitioner and finally evaluate the contributions made by the cognitive perspective to counselling and psychotherapy. In Beck's cognitive therapy, reality testing is highly organized. Beck uses a Socratic dialogue by posing open-ended questions to clients with the aim of getting clients to reflect on personal issues and arrive at their own conclusions. Through this reflective questioning process, the counsellor attempts to collaborate with clients in testing the validity of their cognitions. A process termed as collaborative empiricism. Therapeutic change is the result of clients confronting faulty beliefs with contradictory evidence that they have gathered and evaluated. Beck asserts that telling clients they are thinking irrationally can be detrimental because many clients believe they are seeing things as they really are. Cognitive counsellors view dysfunctional beliefs as being problematic because they interfere with normal cognitive functioning, not because they are irrational. Instead of irrational beliefs, Beck maintains that some ideas are too absolute, broad and extreme. Although cognitive therapy often begins by recognizing the client's frame of reference, the counsellor continues to ask for evidence for a belief system. Beck in the year 1987 emphasizes that the quality of the therapeutic relationship is basic to the application of cognitive therapy. Successful counselling rests on a number of desirable characteristics of counsellors such as genuine warmth, accurate empathy, non-judgmental acceptance and the ability to establish trust and rapport with clients. The counsellor also functions as a catalyst and a guide who helps clients understand how their beliefs and attitudes influence the way they feel and act. Counselors promote corrective experiences that lead to cognitive change and acquiring new skills. Aaron Beck developed an approach known as cognitive therapy, which has a number of similarities to rational emotive behavior therapy. Both are active, directive, time limited, present centered, and structured approaches. Cognitive therapy had its beginnings in the 1960s and has grown in importance in the past 50 years to become one of the most empirically validated approaches to counseling and psychotherapy. Cognitive therapy is an insight-focused therapy that emphasizes recognizing and changing negative thoughts and maladaptive beliefs. Beck's approach is based on the theoretical rationale that the way people feel and behave is determined by how they perceive and structure their experience. The theoretical assumptions of cognitive therapy are that people's internal communication is accessible to introspection, that clients' beliefs have highly personal meanings, that these meanings can be discovered by the client rather than being taught or interpreted by the therapist. The basic theory of cognitive therapy holds that to understand the nature of an emotional episode or disturbance, it is essential to focus on the cognitive content of an individual's reaction to the upsetting event or stream of thoughts. The goal is to change the way clients think by using their automatic thoughts to reach the core schemata and begin to introduce the idea of schema restructuring. This is done by encouraging clients to gather and weigh the evidence in support of their beliefs. Clinical studies indicate the value of cognitive therapy in a wide variety of disorders, particularly depression and the anxiety disorders. It has been successfully applied in treating phobias, 
psychosomatic disorders, eating disorders, anger, panic disorder, substance abuse, chronic pain and has been used in crisis intervention. Judith Beck in the year 1995 has summarized cognitive therapy and I quote, in a nutshell, the cognitive model proposes that distorted or dysfunctional thinking which influence the client's mood and behavior is common to all psychological disturbances. Realistic evaluation and modification of thinking produces an improvement in mood and behavior." Unquote. The purpose of cognitive therapy is to teach people to identify, evaluate and modify their own dysfunctional thoughts and beliefs. Key Concepts of Cognitive Therapy and Counseling Development of Cognitive Distortions Cognitive therapists believe that many factors contribute to the development of dysfunctional cognitions including people's biology and genetic predispositions, life experiences and their accumulation of knowledge and learning. Distorted cognitions begin to take shape in childhood and are reflected in people's fundamental beliefs. This makes people more susceptible to problems that impinge on their cognitive vulnerability. Although CT focuses on the present, an extensive intake interview is used to give practitioners a good understanding of their client's history, development and background. Although cognitive theorists focus primarily on thoughts, they take a holistic view of people and believe that learning about and understanding their feelings and behaviors also is important. Particularly important and related to positive outcome is understanding the emotional responses people have to their faulty cognitions and the impact of those cognitions on mood. Having a comprehensive understanding of people is particularly useful in helping counselors develop interventions that target all three areas of functioning, thinking, feeling and acting. Principles of Cognitive Therapy The following important principles characterize the practice of cognitive therapy. CT is based on the finding that changes in thinking lead to changes in feeling and acting. Treatment requires a sound and collaborative therapeutic alliance. Treatment is generally short-term, problem-focused and goal-oriented. CT is an active and structured approach to treatment. It focuses on the present, although attention is paid to the past when indicated. Careful assessment, diagnosis and treatment planning are essential. CT uses a broad range of strategies and interventions to help people evaluate and change their cognitions. Inductive reasoning and Socratic questioning are particularly important strategies. This is a psychoeducational model that promotes emotional health and prevents relapse by teaching people to identify, evaluate and modify their own cognitions. Task assignments, follow-up and client feedback are important in ensuring the success of the approach. Levels of Cognitions Cognitions can be categorized according to four levels, automatic thoughts, intermediate beliefs, core beliefs and schemas. In CT, counseling typically begins with thoughts and then proceeds to identification, evaluation and modification of intermediate and core beliefs and finally to revision of schemas. Automatic thoughts are the stream of cognitions that constantly flow through one's mind. As one goes through the day, situation-specific thoughts spontaneously arise in reaction to one's experiences. I don't think I'll ever be able to get all the work done. I think I'll eat a healthy lunch today. I'm going to help Rohan with his homework tonight. That man makes me think of my brother, etc. When people pay attention to their thoughts, they become more accessible and people can articulate and evaluate them. 
As counselors get to know and understand their clients and listen to a series of automatic thoughts, the practitioners can formulate hypotheses about a client's core beliefs. At an appropriate time, counselors can share this hypothesis with client for confirmation or disconfirmation along with information on the nature and development of core beliefs. Clients are encouraged to view their core beliefs as ideas rather than truths and to collaborate with the counselor to evaluate and if indicated change their core beliefs. Beck viewed schemas as specific rules that govern information processing and behavior. Schemas lead one to have expectations about experiences, events and roles and to amplify those with information contained in one's schemas. Schemas can act as mental filters affecting the way one perceives reality. Schemas are idiosyncratic and habitual ways of viewing self the world and the future. Schemas can be personal, familial, cultural, religious, gender related or occupational in origin and application. Examples of maladaptive schemas include dependence or incompetence and deprivation. Schemas may be activated by a particular stimulus or light dormant until triggered. When a schema has been activated, it readily incorporates any confirming information and tends to neglect contradictory information. For example, when people view themselves as incompetent, they accept negative information they receive about themselves and overlook or dispute anything positive. Takei and Brewer found that schemas influence retention and distortion of memories. Individuals are more likely to recall observations that are consistent or inconsistent with one's schemas compared to observations that are irrelevant to one's schemas. Inaccuracies in recollections are particularly likely to be schema consistent. The counseling process. Cognitive counseling usually is time limited. For example, 4 to 14 sessions long for relatively less complex problems Sessions are carefully planned and structured to maximize their impact and efficiency. Clients complete inventories and intake questionnaires before the beginning of counseling. Counselors review these before the first session in order to be well prepared. Each session has clear goals and an agenda. Judith Beck recommends the following 10 steps for an initial session. Establish an agenda that is meaningful to the client Determine and measure the intensity of client's mood. Identify and review presenting problems. Elicit the person's expectations from counseling. Educate the client about CT and the role of the client. Provide information about the client's difficulties and diagnosis. Establish goals. Recommend tasks and homework between sessions. Summarize the sessions. Obtain the client's feedback on the session. Counseling Goals Cognitive counselors carefully specify goals for counseling and they draw on a rich array of interventions to achieve them. The overall goal is to help clients recognize and correct errors in their information processing systems. To accomplish this, counselors help clients identify their immediate and underlying thoughts and beliefs as well as associated emotions and behaviors. Evaluate the validity of these thoughts and modify them. Throughout counseling, clients learn to use this process independently and also to develop the skills and attitudes they need to think more realistically and lead more rewarding lives. Counselors and clients collaborate on determining specific goals. Once identified, goals are written down with copies made for both client and counselor. Goals are referred to regularly to assess the progress. Having clear, specific and measurable goals is an important component in CT and increase the likelihood that clients and counselors will collaborate to achieve a shared objective. Relationship between counselor and client. Effective CT requires a good therapeutic alliance. Although CT does not focus primarily on feelings 
An essential role of the practitioner is communicating support, empathy, caring, warmth, interest, optimism, and the other core conditions that promote a successful therapeutic alliance. Cognitive counselors strive to be non-judgmental. They do not tell clients that their thinking is irrational or argue with them about the merits of their thoughts. Rather, counselors help clients to develop the skills they need to make their own judgments and choices. To accomplish this, counselors take on the roles of teacher, scientist, joint empirical investigator and truth seeker, encouraging clients to search for accurate and realistic information. Counselors also are responsible for orienting clients to treatment and helping them develop realistic counseling expectations and goals. Counselors focus on and reinforce successes and attribute their progress to clients' efforts and growth. Unlike psychodynamic counselors, cognitive therapists do not try to elicit or provoke transference reactions. However, if clients do manifest transference, practitioners addressed to it more fully understand and help the clients. Role flexibility characterizes cognitive counselors. Problems within the therapeutic relationship also need to be explored. Judith Beck suggests asking clients for feedback at the end of the session or any time a client's effect appears to be negative during the session. Especially when working with difficult clients, counselors need to identify when such problems occur, conceptualize the reason behind it, and work toward correcting the problem to prevent its detrimental effect on the therapeutic alliance. Intervention Strategies Case Formulation Before the practitioners move forward with interventions designed to modify cognitions, they take some time to develop a case formulation reflecting in-depth understanding of the client. According to Pearson's, a complete case formulation includes six elements, list of problems and concerns, hypothesis about underlying mechanism, relationship of this belief to current problems, recipitation of current problems, understanding of background relevant to development of underlying beliefs, anticipated obstacles to counseling. A thorough case formulation enables practitioners to develop treatment plans that are likely to be successful. When planning treatment, cognitive counselors identify the best points for initial intervention, strategies that are likely to be helpful, and ways to reduce anxiety and other obstacles to progress. Counseling usually focuses first on overt automatic cognitions related to clients presenting problems and as progress is made, shifts to identification and assessment of underlying core beliefs and schemas. Eliciting and Rating Cognitions Judith Beck suggests a basic question that may elicit clients' thoughts. What was going through your mind just then? Once one thought is presented, it often leads to other thoughts. Especially important are thoughts that appear repeatedly in conjunction with a variety of experiences and have a negative impact on the client. Beck uses what she calls a dysfunctional thought record to facilitate identification and modification of such thoughts. This record includes six items. The situation that elicited thoughts and its accompanying physical responses, date and time of the situation, automatic thoughts and extent of belief in those thoughts rated on a 0% to 100% scale, emotions and their intensity rated on a 0% to 100% scale, nature of distortion and ways of modifying the thoughts, outcome including revised beliefs, rating of thoughts and revised thoughts, current emotions and intensity ratings and new actions. The first four items are completed initially, as in the following example. The school called to tell that me that my son had been breaking into the school over the weekend. He was accused of vandalizing the computer room. I felt a knot in my stomach. I felt intense all over. This happened on Monday morning at about 8.30 a.m. I am a failure as a parent, 95% believe rating. My son is a hopeless criminal and it's my fault, 90% believe rating. Anxious 95% intensity, sad 90% intensity. 
determining the validity of cognitions. Once the cognitions have been elicited and placed in the context, clients can assess their validity. Especially important is counselors' use of guided discovery with the help of skillful questioning and experiments to help clients test the reality of their thoughts. These are powerful techniques that must be used with care. Counselors should never act as though they know better than the client, should not debate or argue with the client, or should remain neutral on whether the thought is distorted. The counselor's role is to help clients find the truth. Following are additional approaches that cognitive counselors use to help clients evaluate the validity of their cognitions. Asking clients how another person whom they respect would think about the situation. Asking clients what they would say if their friend had the same thoughts they have. Using humor or exaggerations to take an idea to its extreme. Helping clients recognize their tendency to catastrophize. Encouraging people to imagine their worst fears and then think of ways to deal with them so that the fears have less power over them. Suggesting alternate explanations for a situation. Helping people find a middle ground to counteract extreme ways of thinking. Redefining or reconceptualizing a problem so that it's more amenable to change. Decentering or helping people see they're not the cause of the problem or the center of attention. Labeling the distortion. Evaluation of distorted cognitions can be facilitated by categorizing and labeling the distortions. This helps clients see more clearly the nature of their unrealistic thinking, reminds them that other people have similar distorted cognitions, and gives them a tool for assessing subsequent thoughts. A list of cognitive distortions are as follows. All or nothing or polarized thinking. Viewing a situation in terms of extremes rather than a continuum. Either my son is innocent or he is a hopeless criminal. Overgeneralization. Drawing sweeping conclusions that are not justified by the evidence. I am a failure as a parent because my son was arrested. Mental filter or selective abstraction. Focusing selectively on negative details and failing to see the broad picture. I know my son has been a good student and has not caused any problems in the past, but all I can think about is that how he broke the law. Disqualifying the positive. Paying attention only to negative information. What good are my efforts to be a good mother if this is the result? Jumping to conclusions, arbitrary inferences. Drawing hasty and unwarranted conclusions. My son must be guilty. Someone saw him hanging around the school late that night. Magnification or minimization. Making too much of the negative, devaluing positive information. My son stole a candy bar from another child when he was four. He was destined to become a criminal. Emotional reasoning. Believing that something is true because it feels that way. Paying no attention to contradictory evidence. It just feels like this is my fault and no one can convince me that it isn't. Should and must statements. Having definite and inflexible ideas about how we and others should behave and how life should be. I should never have let Kailash get his driver's license. I should have made sure I met all his friends. I should have been a better mother to him. Labeling and mislabeling. Attaching an extreme, broad and unjustified label to someone. Kailash is a hopeless criminal. Personalization. Assuming inordinate responsibility for events or others' behaviors. My son and I had an argument three days before the school break-in. If I hadn't yelled at him, this probably never would have happened. Catastrophizing. Predicting a negative outcome without considering other possibilities. I just know Kailash will be sent to prison for this. Mind reading. Attributing negative thoughts and reactions to others without checking if they are present. My husband will never forgive Kailash for this. He'll disown him. Tunnel vision. Focusing only on the negative aspects of a situation. I can't do anything right as a parent. There I was eating dinner while my son was breaking into the school. How could I not have known what was going on? Assessment of mood. Assessing mood is an important part of CT for many reasons. Troubling emotions are often the reason behind people seeking counseling. Upsetting emotions are likely to be close to the surface and present early in counseling. 
those feelings can point the way to distorted cognitions. In addition, monitoring the nature and intensity ratings of clients' emotions can provide evidence of progress, while improvement in mood can enhance clients' motivation and optimism. CT was initially developed for the treatment of depression and anxiety, and considerable research demonstrates the effectiveness of this approach in treating these emotional symptoms. Cognitive counselors use structured approaches to assess emotions as they do to assess thoughts. One of Aaron Beck's major contributions to counseling and psychotherapy is the development of brief, concise inventories that provide a quick measure of the nature and intensity of emotions that are more likely to be troubling to the clients. These inventories include Beck Depression Inventory, the Beck Anxiety Inventory, the Beck Hopelessness Inventory, and the Beck Scale for Suicidal Ideation. Any or all of these might be administered before a client begins to be part of the counseling process in order to obtain an emotional baseline. If elevated scores are obtained on an inventory, administration of that inventory every few sessions enables client and counselor to track and quantify changes in emotions. Changing Cognitions The last two steps in Judith Beck's dysfunctional thought record are as follows. Helping clients to formulate new cognitions that are more realistic and adaptive. Evaluating counseling outcome by asking clients to rate their beliefs in the new cognitions, identify and rate their emotions, and determine actions that will be taken in light of their altered thinking. Practitioners work closely with clients to restructure their cognitions and help them find words to express their new cognitions accurately, realistically and in ways that are compatible with their emotions. This process involves helping clients deepen their beliefs in their revised cognitions and make those cognitions a part of themselves. Once again, cognitive counselors draw on a wealth of strategies to accomplish these goals. Following are some of the strategies. Activity scheduling encourages clients to plan and try out new behaviors and ways of thinking as well as to remain active despite feelings of sadness or apprehension. Particularly helpful are experiences that bring feelings of both pleasure and mastery. Learning a new and interesting skill and having a good time can contribute to improved moods and clearer thinking. Mental and emotional imagery helps clients envision and try on new ways of thinking and feeling. They might imagine themselves coping successfully, changing parts of an image or repeating an image to reduce its emotional impact. A man who has thought of himself as uninteresting, for example, might imagine himself telling fascinating stories to an admiring audience. Cognitive rehearsal is a strategy in which clients mentally rehearse a new behavior and then create a cognitive model of themselves, successfully performing that behavior. Some athletes use this technique to improve their skills in their sport. A woman married to a verbally abusive husband used this approach to rehearse asserting herself, making it easier for her to stand up to him when he spoke to her in a demeaning way. A variation is for clients to imagine themselves as someone they admire and then tackle a challenging situation as if they were that person. Thought Stopping can be useful when clients have difficulty in getting rid of a persistent harmful thoughts. Thought stopping involves saying stop either aloud or subvocally each time the unwanted thought recurs and replacing it with a more positive thought. Over time, the harmful thought is likely to diminish in frequency and intensity. Diversions or distractions also can help clients reduce their negative thinking. A woman who was diagnosed with a life-threatening illness had a good prognosis but still experienced constant thoughts of death. To distract herself from these troubling thoughts, she mentally catalogued each item in her extensive wardrobe, beginning the mental list anew each time the negative thoughts returned. Self-talk is a technique in which clients repeat to themselves many times a day positive and encouraging phrases that they have identified as helpful, such as, don't let fear control you, you can do it. In essence, they are giving themselves a pep talk. Affirmations are closely related to self-talk. An affirmation is a sort of slogan that is positive and reinforcing. Clients can post these in prominent places such as the refrigerator or mirror when they will see them frequently and be reminded to their shift in their thinking. An adolescent girl chose as her affirmation, someday you will realize your great potential. Keeping those words in mind helped her deal effectively with challenges. 
keeping diaries of events realistic and distorted cognitions emotions and efforts to make positive changes can increase client's awareness of his or her inner and outer experiences these written records can provide important material for discussion in sessions and serve as a way to track both progress and difficulties letter writing provides another avenue for exploring and expressing thoughts and feelings the woman whose son was accused of breaking into his school might benefit from drafting a letter to her son expressing her reactions to his behavior the letters need not be mailed but can be used as a focus of a session Systematic assessment of alternatives or cost benefit analysis is an approach that can help clients make wise decision. They first list their options along with the pros and cons of each one. Then they assign numbers on a scale of 1 to 10 showing the importance of each advantage and disadvantage. Finally, the total of the numbers assigned to the pros and cons of each option. A man considering a career change used to this approach to help him decide whether to remain in his secure well-paying position in computer technology or pursue his lifelong goal of becoming a counselor. The numerical total strongly reflected a preference for becoming a counselor whereas a list of cons pointed out obstacles to this goal. Relabeling or reframing. Experience or perceptions can help clients think differently about them. For example, a woman who had few dating experiences at the age of 35 stopped thinking of herself as a failure and instead viewed herself as a late bloomer. Role playing can enable clients to actualize some of the new thoughts they have about themselves. For example, a man who had developed a more positive view of his abilities role played sharing his accomplishments with his friends, asking his supervisor for a raise and inviting a colleague to join him for lunch. Rational emotive role play Clients play the emotional part while the counselors play the rational part. The two then engage in a dialogue. Role playing a dialogue between old and new thoughts. Clients use two chairs to represent both their old and new thoughts. Moving from one chair to another, they engage in a dialogue between the two groups of thoughts. This can help clients clarify changes in their thinking and solidify their rational thoughts. Distancing involves projecting into future to put a problem in perspective and diminish its importance a woman realized that getting a b in college course would mean little to her in 10 years bibliotherapy reading about other people who have coped well with experiences similar to the clients can help the client modify his or her thinking graded task assignments are activities that clients complete between sessions starting with easy assignments that guarantee success counselors gradually increase the difficulty of the tasks so that clients continue to learn from them and feel a sense of mastery and accomplishment termination and relapse prevention Like the other phases of CT, the concluding phase is carefully planned and structured to help clients successfully apply what they have learned through counseling. Sessions are scheduled less frequently, typically shifting to every other week, then to once a month, then to every 3 months for at least a year. This gives clients the opportunity to test their skills and cope with any setbacks while maintaining contact with their counselors. Normalizing setbacks and stressing the importance of ongoing learning can enable people to cope with future disappointments successfully. Life skills such as assertiveness, decision making, coping strategies and communication skills which have probably been taught throughout the counseling process are reviewed and solidified. Progress also is reviewed with every effort made to help clients accept credit for and take pride in their accomplishments. Counselors address many concerns that clients have about termination and elicit feedback from the counseling process finally clients and counselors collaborate in developing goals and plans for clients to continue their progress on their own in the end let us summarize this module in beck's cognitive therapy reality testing is highly organized beck uses a socratic dialogue by posing open ended questions to clients with the aim of getting clients to reflect on personal issues and arrive at their own conclusions through this reflective questioning process the counselor attempts to collaborate with clients in testing the validity of their cognitions a process termed collaborative empiricism therapeutic change is the result of clients confronting faulty beliefs with contradictory evidence that they have gathered and evaluated beck asserts that telling clients they are thinking irrationally 
can be detrimental because many clients believe they are seeing things as they really are. Cognitive counselors view dysfunctional beliefs as being problematic because they interfere with normal cognitive functioning, not because they are irrational. Instead of irrational beliefs, Beck maintains that some ideas are too absolute, broad and extreme. Although cognitive therapy often begins by recognizing the client's frame of reference, the counselor continues to ask for evidence for a belief system. Beck, in the year 1987, emphasizes that the quality of the therapeutic relationship is basic to the application of cognitive therapy. Successful counseling rests on a number of desirable characteristics of counselors, such as genuine warmth, accurate empathy, non-judgmental acceptance, and the ability to establish trust and rapport with clients. The counselor also functions as a catalyst and a guide who helps clients understand how their beliefs and attitudes influence the way they feel and act. Counselors promote corrective experiences that lead to cognitive change and acquiring new skills.